And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Well, that's uh, Old Maine, Dennis Webster's uh, book, and it is about the uh, Utica Lunatic Asylum. Did it sell well, Dennis? Yeah, they have, we've sold a lot of copies. It's very popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you think of the Utica Lunatic Asylum, at least I do, think of uh, the Utica Crib. Yeah, that was uh, invented by uh, Amariah Brigham, who was the first superintendent in 1843. And it's interesting because in the 1870s, they ruled it as kind of not a good device anymore, inhumane sort of. But at the time that he invented that, people were chained. So that was his alternative to chaining people who had mania. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the time, it was considered the best device there was for such a thing. Yeah, well, there, uh, part of it, wasn't it, Dennis? Is, not so much punishment, but as try to keep them from hurting themselves. True, true. Keep them calm, and keep them um, sedated, uh, you know, non-sedated, but yeah, keep them yeah. still. And Is there, them. Uh, are there any Utica cribs left? I've heard they got one on display uh, in Illinois, an original one. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to search wide and, lo and low for one, and I couldn't find one. You were telling me during the commercial break that uh, uh, it was Dr. Brigham, right? Right, Dr. Amariah Brigham. Yeah, right. uh, Dr. Brigham is uh, buried next to another, or near another famous uh, local person. Yeah, he's buried in Forest Hill Cemetery right near Roscoe Conkling. You mm -hmm. can see his obelisk right near uh, Roscoe's uh, resting place. Yeah, he, uh, the Utica Lunatic Asylum really uh, was at the forefront of a lot of stuff. Oh, it was incredibly revolutionary. It was the first of its kind in the United States of America in 1843. Brigham brought in there what was called moral treatment. It had started in France and England, but it was the first institution in America to have that, where they considered mental illness to be a disease that could be curable and treated, not something where you're shunned and chained away for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. And uh, uh, that was a big, well, it still is a big uh, campus. It's not used like it was back in its day, but uh, they had all kinds of stuff there. I mean, there was a print shop, there was uh, uh, just a big campus. Yeah, very huge. And I like to tell people where Utica College is now, that was their farm. Yep. They had a farm out back where the, where the patients would raise their own vegetables and they would prepare them and cook them in their own kitchen there. It, it was pretty amazing. And part of the moral treatment was having jobs. Mm -hmm. They had a print shop in there. They did all sorts of different occupations as part if, of the therapy. If you're on Whitesboro Street and you're looking uh, at the front of, uh, well, it's had many names over the years. Yeah. Uh, the Utica Lunatic Asylum and the State Psychiatric Center and on and on. But if you're looking at those Doric columns from Whitesboro right. Street, if you look to the left, that would be at the corner of Whitesboro and is that York Street? Yes. Uh, there is a building there that's boarded up. What was that building? I think that was one of the physician's personal residences. Mm -hmm. There's so many buildings up yeah. there, but in my book I do write about the other buildings on there like Brigham. Brigham Hall, and um, they had a laboratory there. Uh, so many different buildings, but the physicians lived on the campus, and then it, when it first opened, interestingly, if you were a, a patient aide, you had to live 24-7 there. You'd signed a one-year contract, mm. and you worked there 24-7. And they trained uh, nurses. They trained RNs up there. Uh, I know some friends of mine had their uh, registered nurse training up there. Yeah, they started that in the late 19th century. That was also another first of its kind. It was a very big nursing school, very mm -hmm. popular at the time. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it went through almost to when it closed in 1978. Now you've taken the tour. Yes, I have. Uh, have. Were you able to see a little bit more than what we've seen on the public tour? No, no. working on it, Yeah. working on it. But it, it, it's rather dangerous. They're doing uh, abatement in there right now, from what I understand, they're you know removing some asbestos and other dangerous materials. So I'm, I'm thinking the thought process is that they'll be able to open that up to do a more complete and thorough tour. Yeah. But they, they just don't feel comfortable bringing people in some of those spots. One of the things that I was hoping to get to see was down in the cellar. And yeah. uh, that, that wasn't on the tour. Yeah, the catacombs. And it's interesting because I've had more debates whenever I do a talk on this about people say, I know they chained people there. I seen the chains. I write in there that they didn't chain people only because, you know, as a writer, you can only go on facts. Mm -hmm. And the facts that I found they were very, at least when it first opened, Brigham was very anti-chain. If they showed up with a, with a person chained in a wagon, he would personally come down the steps and have them remove those shackles and escort them into Old Main. Mm. I can't speak for later on, but... You talk about the catacombs. Yeah. 
that gives the impression of like tunnels and <laughs> things like that. Right, more like a, a basement area, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. All right, we're going to take a short break, come back, and we'll talk more about your book. Dennis Webster's our guest. Short break, right back. <laughs>